Hello everyone, in this video we're continuing with our RTS controls. We'll add the option to move our follow camera and zoom in and out, as well as be able to attack enemy targets. This is by no means a perfect solution yet, but a great start in the right direction. Before we start, I would like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. This scene will be made available on Patreon. So we're going to continue where we left off last time. And I'll be focusing on just the one character we can select for now as it's all about the actions. And I'm even going to remove these as it's easier to duplicate them after. So let's start off with adding a character melee component. And I'm using melee here. If you want to use shooter instead, you know, use shooter instead. It's not really that different. Let's add a character to the scene. I'm going to drag him here. There we go. And I'm going to give him a different color. So I'm just going to use red and this is one of the default reds that's included with um, shooters, that's all looks pretty much the same. So make sure you have the example scenes installed for what we're going to do next. So we're going to add a stats component and this stats component on this character gives him his health. Now your values will be slightly different because I've tweaked them so you'll just see HP and MP and HP will most likely be 100 if you've installed the examples. So next up, we're going to add melee to this character as well. And we're going to add two triggers. And what these triggers really do is they're going to allow us to select a target and they're going to allow us to take damage on this target. So we're going to start off with a mouse click, left mouse click. You can do right mouse click, you can do whatever you want really. And we're going to add a on receive attack. These need conditions and these need actions. So the conditions, let's rename them life and death. Are rely and these will be reliant on our stats values. So that's why we need to set them up. And I'm using character here for everything instead of invoker just because it's slightly more reliable invoker sometimes just means something different and well there we go so if his he has less than zero health and we're going to add some actions to this later but for now ragdoll and there we go and again character and drag in our character let's actually give him an appropriate name enemy basic there we go. So that's it for the, the basic settings here. Then next up, attribute value. And we're going to select our character enemy basic again. Health and subtract. And we're going to subtract. I'm going to do five because I only have 25% health. If you have the 100%, which should be the normal, you know, put this a bit higher or don't if you want it to take longer it's up to you basically the amount you set here gives him uh, you know a certain amount of hits before he dies so really simple then these will be our first actions and I'm going to call them uh, combat actions now these combat actions are the ones performed by the player so let's actually add that in front of it so player combat actions and this is quite important so if instead of RTS you're going for a Diablo type of game I, I would suggest not putting the combat actions on you know on the enemy but just on the player in this case that's a lot easier because we'll have multiple characters that all you know perform the same actions so it's just a lot easier to do and yeah let's set these up so I'm going to use highlight again just like in the previous video so we're also going to highlight the enemy and the color I don't know, I'm going to use black I'm not sure how well that how good that looks but we'll see 
and let's drag in the enemy basic again. Then next up we're going to draw the player sword and this is one of those examples of what I meant if you're going for a Diablo type of game then you you know you wouldn't put the drawing on the uh, on the enemy but it's just more switching it around the mechanics are pretty much the same then a wait and this just gives him a bit of time to draw his weapon and then we're going to use a move character and this again will be our player marker and let's actually add a marker here other marker and there might be better ways of doing this based on distance I honestly haven't really played around a lot with the whole mouse um, mouse combats you know movement etc so if there's better ways you know obviously do that instead of a marker but I haven't come across anything as of yet so we're going to use wait until he arrives so we want to make sure he arrives there and then we're going to execute some actions and let's make sure we wait until these finish so game creator actions so I'll leave that as a you know child of this one and then this will be really simple so we're going to use focus player set target and that's the character and input melee and you can add more obviously you know you can have combos etc make it more complicated I'm just going to use basic slash and we're going to do restart and that's it so really simple now we do have life and death so basically on damage it will subtract health and that's what happens when we slash him and then once health is over he's going to ragdoll uh, we're going to add something else to this as well because this need does need to be a tiny bit more complicated now that we've added more actions so highlight is going to be off on our character here so let's drag him in again he's still going to ragdoll but we also need to release focus so we drag in the focus again and we're going to do release target then we're going to add a weight and I'm going to do two seconds and I really want to highlight why I'm doing this so I'm going to have the player sheet his weapon automatically after kill this unfortunately is a pretty long default animation and that's why I'm adding the two seconds if you are not doing this on the player then you know you don't really need those two seconds if you use diff different animations those two seconds might be longer shorter that's you know completely dependent on that so I just wanted to explain why I'm using those wait two seconds because I know I generally use wait a lot but this really has a valid reason and it's something you might want to change yourself so cool so we have all of our basic actions here and yeah it's really not all that um, all that complicated to be completely honest it's a uh, pretty basic and obviously when it's basic there are some limitations as well and I definitely intend to expand on this but I just wanted to already set something up here so let's try this out so we select our character we move and there we have the, the default problem actually of not being able to move our camera so I'm going to drag him a lot closer oh there we go I'm going to move him a lot closer for now and another thing we need to do here which I actually completely forgot is we need to make sure we exit drag these actions in and next up we need to add something else I also forgot which is a cancel of actions there we go cancel actions and that's the the ones that's automatically restarting basically so let's do that before those two seconds and let's hit play 
There we go. So now he's a lot closer. We can move him around. Target our enemy. He'll go there. He'll attack. And then once he dies, he's going to cancel the actions. She his sword and we're good. Now next up, we're going to move the camera. If you are going for a Diablo type of game, your camera motor will be really simple. It will be a follow and it will basically follow, look at the player. And that's pretty much it. So really simple to do. For RTS, RTS purposes, this is slightly different as we'll need to move the camera ourselves as it doesn't actually follow a player and it shouldn't follow anything. Now, to get the perspective we want, we do need to use follow camera. So we're going to use a trick that will allow us to sort of manipulate the camera, but we're not really manipulating the camera itself. So it's a, it's a pretty neat trick. We'll use action pack one and two for this. Now do make sure that set camera properties is turned on for the next steps on your camera motor. So this is the terrain we set up last time and you know it's a really basic plane with a box glider trigger and on double click we deselect all players. Now I'm going to expand this to 10. There we go. And I'm pretty sure that was initially turned on actually. And then next up what we're going to do is we're going to add a new terrain. So just a plane in this case. Zero, zero, zero. And this is also this is going to be ten wide as well. Just ten. You can make it bigger, I mean it's completely up to you. And I'm going to locate this a tiny bit lower. There we go. We're going to rename our terrain to deselect our original one and we're going to be removing our meshes. So basically it's just a collider trigger and that's it. Nothing else. And this plane will be duplicated again. We're going to name the first one actually terrain. There we go. And the next one is now not going to be a terrain. That's what we're actually going to use to follow. So let's go, we're going to name this move camera. There we go. Going to drag the deselect as a part of that. So it's a part of the move camera, which is, uh, which is nice. We need the deselect to move along as well. Obviously that trigger area as we should always be able to call on it. So let's drag that up. Let's drag this up as well. There we go. So the default terrain, I'm going to lower that a tiny bit. So minus 0 0.1 actually, not 0 0.1. There we go. And the move camera layer is going to get a, well, we don't need a box collider. We can just use the mesh collider, convex trigger. We're going to add a rigid body and on the rigid body, we need to make sure use gravity is turned off. And we're going to remove the mesh renderer. So it's basically not going to have a mesh, but it does need the trigger and it needs the rigid body. And then we're going to add a couple of triggers to this. So first trigger and second trigger. There we go. And the first one is going to be a mouse hold, middle mouse hold. There we go. I'm going to use timeout here. Really simple action. This one is going to be a scroll wheel and a really simple action as well. I'm using action pack two and one for this. So I'll link those in the description, obviously, but they're really useful in general, not just for these purposes. So on action pack one, we're going to use the drag object with mouse and we're going to drag in our move camera, allow dragging, restrict dragging, and we're only going to do Y and Z. And we're going to drag it to the middle mouse. Now you can use something else, obviously, if you want, but 
I'm using the middle mouse here. Cool. Then on the next one, we're going to add a action pack to, and we're going to do field of view, follow camera. I'm going to change the sensitivity a bit. And as you might have guessed, field of view is not really the same as zooming in and out, and it does alter perspective a bit. And that's a shame, but you know, so far there, I didn't really come up with a different solution yet. If you do have it, you know, please let me know in the comments, that would be useful. So we have everything on our move camera here, so let's give this a go. But before we hit play, we obviously need to make sure we're actually following these things here. So let's go to our camera motor and we're going to follow our move camera and we're going to focus on our move camera as well. Perfect. So let's hit play. And now if we drag our left mouse, it looks like we're moving the camera. And we're not really moving the camera. I do want to highlight that we're moving a plane. So if you go into scene and you turn on gizmos, you know, you'll, you'll see that we're actually moving this field here. So let's put this next to each other. And as you can see, we're moving the field, not really the camera. But, you know, the reality is, is doesn't really make any difference whatsoever it's a bit of a trick but you know it works exactly the same and if we scroll we're changing the field of view so we're basically zooming in so it's not an absolutely perfect solution but it's uh it works pretty well so that's that and just to demonstrate it does work we can now drag in you know we can duplicate this one have another and have another we'll select our character here where let's go attack him come on take him out there we go and now we can move our camera and we can continue get a bit closer to the action and yeah obviously you can change sensitivities etc I cut the low value because I do want it to go slow but you know that's uh, completely up to you and yeah that's uh, I mean that's really how how simple it can be obviously you know we'll need to fine-tune a couple of things etc and we'll need to make sure this all works well for multiple characters as well but that's for the next video. So hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.